so we're just nearing the end of the baseball season and uh god between work and baseball i'm just getting so burnt out and trying to call people back and it this is how it, it happens to me every year around this time where i just get so buried with stuff to do and um so i'm just taking a little time for myself today i'm not working landon's flown off to the netherlands so um, he won't be around for a week, so I don't have any help anyway, so uh, just feeling a little burnt out taking the day off and uh, So we're gonna switch it up today do something a little different um, Something you guys don't know about me is is one of my favorite things to do in the world Is killing trees. I love killing trees. It's it's literally it makes me happy to go kill trees and You know at one point I thought this might be my profession. I'd I love doing it. I love the precision involved in it. I love the thinking. I love the problem solving of it. So uh, today we're going to go kill a tree. Uh, there's this big, big tree next to the lake. Uh, it's growing out of this big rock and the guy's worried that it's going to be uh, falling on his house because it's not like rooted in the ground. It's on a rock. So I've loaded up all my gear um, and we are going to go kill this tree and I don't really know what's involved in killing the tree because I haven't seen it with my own eyes. He sent me pictures of, of this big tree growing on top of a rock next to his house and uh, so I have all my climbing gear, uh, snatch block, uh, my pole saw, my two saws, my climbing saw, my helmet, gas, rope and uh, I think we got enough to pretty much tackle any any job. I've got my climbing boots in the truck if, if I end up having to climb it. So. Uh, I'm gonna go troubleshoot this tree and see how how I can bring it down safely. There's a line next to it and, and the house isn't far away. So uh, I think I've got everything I need and we're gonna go tackle this job. Just fueling up on the way to the, uh, the tree cutting job here and it's like, ah, uh, we're gonna be happy that it's under $4 a gallon. Finally, it's like under four bucks a gallon and, and, and we're supposed to be happy about this. We're all fueled up now. Uh, got to fill up my fuel tank, my def tank. We're ready to go. Um, got to do one little, one little detour here. Um, I forgot that I left my first aid kit at hunting camp and it's at my buddy's house, which is indirectly on the way so um, obviously it's not to would be smart to go cut and climb trees and do whatever I got to do by myself out in the middle of the woods there's no service where I'm going so I at least want to have my first aid kit you know I've got stuff in there like uh, you know for instance I have a, a one-handed tourniquet and some blood clot or hopefully I'll never need any of it but you know there's there's burn cream in there, which, you know, maybe or maybe we're not supposed to use burn cream now, but, uh, Steri strips. I have Steri strips in my kit, which those continuously come in handy. Um, they're like little strips that you can, uh, stitch yourself up with or, or whatever. Uh, we've used them a few times for sure in my family. My kids have Steri stripped them right up, you know, with them. We don't have to take them to the doctors to get stitched up. Uh, anyhow, so I'm going to do that. I have to look at, he's got a tree leaning over his driveway that he wants me to look at. So uh, it's a tall pine tree. Take a look at that. And then we're going to be off to the middle of nowhere. We're going to this, um, this lake. Um, it's like this pristine lake. It's not heavily built on, it's not like Winnipesaukee where uh, there's houses everywhere and everybody's right next to each other. This one's like it's a beautiful lake. There's, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's pretty big. Uh, it's called Lake Nubanusa. I don't think they let anybody build there anymore. Um, it feels just really private, and you feel like you're in the woods, but you're on the water. It's really cool. I'll show you when I get there. The driveway is like, I don't know. He's probably got a mile or a mile and a half worth of dirt driveway that comes down to the to the water at, at this camp, which we call it a camp, but I mean this camp. It's probably bigger than my house, so anyhow, I'm going to grab that stuff and then we'll be off to, to cut some trees. Okay, after uh, miles and miles of dirt road, we're 
finally to the driveway that leads to the camp here. Um, you can see it's just like a, it's a narrow dirt road, kind of meanders through here all the way down to the lake. This is the, this is the kind of lakefront that gets me excited. It's not like the highly developed lakefront property that I'd want to be at. I want to be out in the middle of nowhere like this. Okay, we made it. This is the, uh, I guess this is the culprit right here. It's a big old, big old birch tree. Actually doesn't, probably doesn't look that big, but it's, it's actually a really good sized birch. That's too bad. He's scared that it's gonna, um, it's gonna end up hitting his house here. And uh, you can see it's growing on top of this rock. This boulder in between that other one. It actually might have, well, it's rooted on that side pretty good, but this side, it probably doesn't have much hold in this side. So I think he's scared that it's gonna just blow into the house, but. So we got wires right here and wires there. That kind of sucks. Just wondering if I could drop it here somewhere. Um, what do we got? The house, wires, wires. The rock is right there because, you know, it's leaning towards the house a bit, but I don't know, I could almost, or almost notch it on this side and drop it here. This rock is right in the way. But if I did... If I put my face cut up here above that rock, see it's above this big boulder, I might be able to pull it, pull it that way. Or if I notched it here below, I could pull it this way a bit and I'd pull it into those trees there. You know, I'd have to keep it just right beside this rock and pull it straight at that maple there. And it would hit that maple. And I think that the tree might be short enough to fall in that gap. And I could actually just measure it here quick and see where it's going to fall. Okay, so that's the, that's the big birch tree right there that I'm going to cut. And just to the left of my truck, you're going to see that's the maple tree that we're going to aim at. Okay. So what we want to do to measure the height of this is picture it like a right triangle. Okay, so I actually have one right here. And what I'm going to do is cover up that tree. Okay, where I think the top is, right? Uh, okay, got about covered. And you're going to see, oh, if I angle it right, you're going to, if I cover that, it's hard to get on on camera here my perspective is much different so okay just like that and that maple tree in the gap there you can see that if I cut it there geez I'm sorry about this camera job if I cut it there we're gonna be just into that maple tree so we're gonna just brush it with the the tip of those limbs I don't think it's going to be enough to stop it. So I think I could actually pull straight at that maple tree, avoid all these lines, avoid climbing and cutting and dropping and doing all that hard work and just pull it right over. Now this is nice. This is nice lakefront property here. You can see there's, I mean, there's no houses. We're private, nobody around. You can do whatever you want. Nobody's going to bother you. See, there's a camp down there with a boat, but I mean, everybody's just spaced out here. There's another one right here on the left with a couple of boats, but it's just, I mean, it's beautiful out here and, I, and it's deep too, like in spots. They got, um, they have some nice lake trout fishing in here too. And, and people come for bass as well. Um, I guess they, this is a really good spot for ice fishing in the winter too. And uh, I did see, 
I did see a loon out here when I got here, but he might be underwater somewhere. And they have bald eagles that live around here too. Really just, yeah, really nice, quiet and serene type of place. There's so much more to see in the country than there is working in the city. Um, I would way rather be out in the country and, you know, just like, look at this white birch here. That is just a substantial white birch and it's super healthy. It's just a straight stick for the, for 20 feet here, probably. But look how, I mean, look how wide this is. That's, if you do it like that, it's about 21 inches wide there. I mean, that's a pretty good sized white birch. It's an old tree and it's nice and healthy. And then you see this one here, this is a white birch as well. And it's got remnants of a, of a chaga mushroom that was on here. Uh, you see what it looks like? It's just this burnt, they call it tinder fungus. So chaga mushroom, it's a medicinal mushroom that they make tinctures with. And um, you'll find them on white birches and silver birches and stuff. Um, and originally that mushroom will grow on the tree to, uh, to heal the tree. So there was probably a wound here. And then that mushroom uh, starts growing and it saves the tree, you know, for a while. And then eventually it may be the, the death of the tree. There's some debate about that or not, you know, but otherwise that tree would have died probably. It saves the tree and then it kind of consumes the tree over time. And um, anyhow, enough about that. Get in my truck position to get this other tree cut over here. All right, I just climb my way up here and got strapped in and getting ready to set up this rope. But man, this is a beautiful tree. Just, I mean, it's healthy. It's too bad we gotta cut it. Um, yeah, so then this rope is gonna go down over to the snatch block over there and then back to my truck. Tree cutting is a toxic subject. It doesn't matter who you talk to or what you see online. Everybody knows how to cut a tree. They've all done it. They've all seen their old man do it. You're going to do it the wrong way. You'll do it the wrong way no matter who you talk to. Um, but it's just, it's really about just being safe doing it and thinking about it and having a strategy. Uh, I'm not the best tree cutter out there. Uh, I get by. I do fine. I haven't had anything uh, major happen yet. No major accidents. Um, no major damage. Um, I've done a lot of close quarters felling type stuff, climbing, cutting, um, and you know, sometimes you have close calls with like, you know, deadfalls or, you know, widow makers or whatever, but it's kind of part of it. You have to survive enough of that to get good at it. And even still, it's a dangerous thing. I do know people that have died uh, cutting trees. Um, I know it's dangerous and, and these people have done it a long time. They do it their whole careers and then slip up once, you know, maybe get complacent, maybe not pay attention one time. So there's a, there's a lot of thinking and strategy that goes into it to do it safely. Um, so I'm not the best tree cutter out there, but I can do it fine and I feel comfortable doing it. Um, don't take any of this as advice or how to cut trees for crying out loud. Do it your own way. Um, this is my setup. So I've got my winch. Well, first of all, I've got the truck here. Um, I chalked a tire with that nice rock I found right there beside it. Parking brakes on. I've got this winch. It's a 12,000 pound winch uh, with wire, uh, wire rope, uh, 12,000 pound rope. This is my bull rope here. Um, it's 14,000 pound rope. And I've got it just tied on here with a, I just cow hitched it on. I backed it up with a half hitch in case for some reason it decides to slip. Um, I've got it down to this snatch block over here to reroute it, redirect it to the tree. And, you know, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't tie it so high because, um, you know, it, you get the most strength down low, but that strap that I have there is too short to get it that low. And, and I should have, I thought I grabbed my, my longer strap, but I didn't, that's only the six foot strap instead of the 12 foot. So I had to go up a little higher to get it around the tree. Um, but you know, this has a substantial root system here, so I should be able to pull off of it. And, and not like it's gonna take a lot of effort to get this tree over anyhow, 
when I get the face cut in it and I notch it, it's, I mean, it's, it's probably not going to take more than a thousand pounds or so to get it to come over. So, um, I don't have tension on the rope. Um, just, just, you know, the, the rope is still, uh, slack just enough to tighten it up and get everything directed where it's going to go. I don't want to put tension on it until I make my cuts. When I make my cuts, then I'm going to start putting tension on it and I'll do it slowly with the winch. You know, I could pull it with the truck. Um, but I feel, feel like there's a lot more slower control with the winch. And also this is the first time I get to use my winch. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So at first glance, when I'm inspecting this tree, I just want to go around it and see what's going on with the tree. If there's any rot or anything. Um, and I do see this defect in the tree here, um, which I don't know what that's from, but it looks like a little bit of split. That might be a vein in the tree that kind of separates the tree. So normally I wouldn't have my face cut going so deep, but I think what I'm going to do is, is get my face cut deeper than this defect in the tree. That way I'm into some good straight grain hinge wood. Obviously I don't want to put my hinge here or my hinge in front of it because um, the tree could split here in barber chair. So I'm going to do it behind it and get into some clean wood. I'll go deep, uh, way deeper than I normally go to get beyond this defect. Okay, so uh, not really what I was looking for here, uh, a little bit unexpected, but this, this vein goes in uh, way more to the right than I thought. I thought it was going across the tree from what I could see, but uh, it's not. Um, so my face cut, I've, I've got it in. It's a little choppy here because I got this stupid, I'm trying this new carbide chisel chain out and it's just, it's not, it's not sharp at all. It's very dull. It's hard to cut with it. Um, I just figured I'd try one and I'm not really having the best luck with it being sharp. Um, so I've got, is, there's a tiny bit of rot right here. Uh, I don't know how much is in the tree, but I can see all this wood here is clean. Okay. And notice I didn't cut beyond this, right? I don't want any saw cuts going into the tree beyond that face cut. Um, that would be called a Dutchman or a Kerf Dutchman. Um, what you don't want that, what we want is this face to close against this face. Um, and then then the hinge wood will start to tear um, So if we had a saw cut in there the hinge wood would start to tear before that or, or Sorry, not even tear but pull fiber what we're looking for is fiber pull before it starts to separate um, So I think I got enough wood here and plus with the rope and the winch that you know and, and, and this is going that way So it's not going across that way. So it looks like if it was to break it would break the other way, which I'm not too concerned about. Um, I think that I can set my hinge here. I'm going to do a plunge cut. I'll pull it, plunge it in. I'll set my hinge um, and then I'll work my saw to the back and I'll get a wedge in there and I'll do a, it, it's called a back release plunge cut. Um, and that's typically what I do on something like this. So I ended up taking the cheeks off both these sides um, in an effort to try to get my plunge cut to go through on the other side. Um, I only have a 20 inch bar on my saw because, you know, I've been cutting cordwood at home. So I didn't think to put the 25 inch bar on it because, you know, this tree from the picture just didn't look like it was that big. So, uh, in hindsight, I could have put the 25 inch bar on it and, uh, been able to plunge all the way through no problem. So yeah, if you get into a pinch, sometimes you can just cheek these two pieces off and get your saw to plunge through. Um, but even still, I did both sides and I still didn't find my bar coming through on the other side. So it's still more than 20 inches across. Um, so yeah, I've got the hinge set here and you can see, uh, you don't want, you don't want to take, um, too much, right? But you don't want to leave too much either. Um, you know, I think that they say typically, and it varies tree species to species that, um, the, the width of your hinge because we don't want it to snap if we leave too much on there it will snap all we want it to do is to guide this tree and pivot down right um, so I actually I usually start pretty level with the with the notch here um, and sometimes you can go up like an inch or two uh, if you want to leave a stump on the back so imagine if this tree hinges over and falls that way and then hits that tree over there it can't it can't push back off the stump that way if you leave a piece there. So uh, this one, I'm actually okay with it hitting the trees over there and then pushing back that way because because then it will drop. If it, if it springs back, 
that way, then it will want to drop to the ground and not be hung up over there. So I'm okay with it pushing back this way. And I would actually rather it just push back that way and that way it, it comes all the way to the ground here. Otherwise, you know, it might hang up a little bit and I might have to cut it a couple times to get it down to the ground. Um, I think it's gonna hit the ground fine, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm gonna start working my saw back now that I got my hinge established across. Um, and it's not going to be the prettiest hinge because I had to work from both sides. I had to come and plunge from this side and plunge from that side. And I'm trying to hold at these weird awkward angles because I'm in the air here on this rock, you know. And holding a, a decent sized saw up at those angles is tough. Especially because I got a dull blade on it. My chain is just so dull with that carbide tip. I had no idea that it was going to be so dull compared to a normal chain. Um, you might not happen... To you might not have to sharpen it as much, but it's definitely not as sharp as a new regular chain. So, all right, well, I'm gonna get this underway. I'm gonna get it all the way back till there's one strap of wood left on the back. I'm gonna drive my wedge in, uh, and then I'm gonna go over to the truck, tension up the uh, line a little bit. Uh, I'll release the back cut, and then I'll, I'll pull it over. That's the plan. Okay, here we go. So I've just got that little strap of wood holding in the back now driven a wedge in. I've tightened up my winch so it's the rope's really tight. Um, I'm just going to release that little piece in the back. I expect that um, you know it will just give a little spring and go but it might want to sit there. If it sits there I'm just going to drive the wedge in a little bit more. Um, and also you know I can just go hit the winch a little bit once it's released and it should pull it right over. Um, the wedge is just there so it doesn't sit down uh, it doesn't try to sit down into my bar as I'm as I'm releasing that back cut And you know, I can I can wedge the tree over with that as well, but I'll probably just winch it over Okay, so I've got this back release cut coming in here, but you can see how it's just burning up in there I had to switch to my other saw that that carbide chain is so dull. It's just like I'm having the hardest time Cutting through that it's just burning up and it's birch for crying out loud. So I've got my top handle so I'm just gonna finish that cut and um, you know what? I should try to film this too. Let me see if I can set up my camera and you guys can watch. Okay. I got my phone propped up in the most ridiculous way here, so I hope you get the... I just got it propped up on a bunch of garbage, so hopefully it doesn't fall over. This is the stubbornest saw I've ever purchased in my life. It has been like this since brand new. I've returned it. They said it was working perfectly fine. It is the, just a cold-blooded pig. Um, and I should have just said, you know what? I'll buy the 201T when it came out instead of getting this thing.
Jeez. It's almost like we wrote a script for that one. Yeah. That's an ugly plunge cut right there. But, I mean, it did the trick. You can see see the rot in the hinge wood, but I could see it was good wood here and good wood here. Um, we got decent fiber pull on that. I was worried to go a little thinner with the hinge. Um, this stuff all pulled really nice. These ones are a little a little bigger than you like to see here. That chunk, there's nothing you can do about it because it's kind of rotted there, but that's what you're looking for. It's all that real nice fiber pull, right? Um, nice consistent hinge right across, really close to, con you know, consistent the whole way for, you know, for cutting from both sides. I had to plunge from both sides on this one. Um, and when you do it from both sides, it's about as consistent as you're gonna get. When you do it from one side, it's really easy to set that hinge and be really nice and consistent. Um, you can see, so I have my wedge in here like that, um, just so it doesn't fall back on, you know, if it wants to settle back down on the on the chain, uh, the chainsaw bar. So it, this will just hold it off the bar. So you just cut down at an angle like that and release it. And you know, the second it released, it actually just leaned forward a slight bit, you know, so that's, that's what we were looking for. So yeah, let's check it out. It went right to the left right here. It just, look at it, barely got it. it this, I knew the rock was in the way, but it, you know, we're pulling, I had, I had my, um, I had my notch set for right there and it still went a little bit to the right and i think because um well let's see you know it, it sat for that way and it still ended up going over we'll have to watch the video back i wonder if it i wonder if it hit this on the way or if it hit that on the bounce i'll have to look it might have hit it on the way uh, but you can see yeah this is a nice majestic tree blocking the driveway um I probably ought to cut it up a little bit and let the homeowner, you know, get into their driveway. But I, I just told him I'm just I'll I'll cut it down. I'll get it on the ground. So hopefully he's willing to do a little bit of work because I don't have much time before I got to head to baseball again. So got baseball today, just like every day. All right, that's a wrap. That's my uh, that's my day off. Tree cutting. What do you guys do on your day off? Man, that's exciting. That's all I live for. Live for killing trees. <laughs> uh, it's a nice little reset. You know, life's been pretty hectic. Um, work, phone calls, baseball, juggling my wife's uh, schedule. She works nights, she works days, so sometimes I gotta take care of the kids and she's gotta take care of the kids. Or, uh, it's hard to find balance sometimes and uh, you know work has just been exhausting so it's nice to have a day off nice to go kill some trees even though it was like a nice majestic birch tree I love I love big like big old trees uh, and you don't see many birch trees like that that one is a silver birch uh, I think people might call it a brown birch too silver birch Sometimes you can find the chaga mushrooms on those ones as well, but uh, not often. It's mostly the yellow birch around here that they grow on. Sometimes, occasionally on a white birch. Um, but just, you know, the, the whole thought process of it, like I don't, I don't like just going to work and doing the same thing every day, just laying one brick on top of two, like easy setup. I like to think, I like to problem solve, strategy, Tree cutting has all of that. Not like, not like out in the woods, but like close quarter stuff near near houses, uh, near power lines, stuff like that. Stuff you got to think about. Um, and when it all comes together, it just feels it feels really great. Uh, that's why I love doing it. I didn't end up getting into tree cutting as a business because it is a lot of work, and you need a lot of equipment. I mean, a, brand, a new chipper is like 70 grand, and then you need a skid steer, or mini has, so I'm just not doing that. I like the I drop it, you chop it deal, like, I just love killing them and walking away, and then they can do all the work for it, so. Um, anyhow, yeah, uh, that was a quick, I don't know, it only took me about an hour, so uh, it was pretty quick. 
trees on the ground. I did limit up for the guy uh, just so, you know, I don't like to just leave it dangerous. Like a big tree with limbs coming out like that. Um, you know, a lot of those limbs are loaded under pressure. They're tip loaded. Uh, they're springers. They can spring back. So I just like to leave it in a position where like an amateur with a chainsaw can cut it up without getting their teeth smashed out or, or having the tree roll over on them. So I left it about as safe as I could and uh, you know, he'll cut it up and him and his boys can drag the brush away. And um, now I'm, uh, I'm off to uh, go watch a baseball game again.